I definitely was one of the first females to be sponsored and make a living off of professional surfing in Canada. I think growing up here at Sombrio played a big part in that. Hi everyone. First of all, fantastic films. I really loved the surf uh, theme block for this festival. Um, so Tara, is Tara, Tara, how do you, how do you pronounce it? My parents call me Tara. Tara sounds very regal, but it's Tara. So I see that you have a lot of previous experience producing content for various media companies. Um, what has your personal creative journey been like and how did it lead to creating such a gorgeous film about surf? My background was mostly in documentary television. So in the early aughts, it was um, reality television was maybe one of the beginning starting uh, of my career. And then luckily I got to move into documentary, um, but it taught me a few things. Like if you don't have a hook, um, then maybe keep moving forward to find a new story and, uh, and trust your in instincts. So when I met Leah, I was just very compelled by her story. I thought it was really rich. Um, and we, I had to tell it in three minutes. That was the broadcast order. Uh, but we certainly could have expanded it more if, if we could, uh, it was a rich story. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there was, it was such a fruitful story. It definitely could have been a full length feature, but I also did like, uh, the conciseness of the three minutes. I did want to touch on your relationship with Leah. How did you, how did you initially connect with her? How did that form? I, I just started researching um, pioneers and cold water surfing in ge general, and then I saw that she was available on, on Facebook, and so I sent her a message, and uh, luckily she was open to me calling her, and we, we started basically on, on Zoom just like this. Why do you think it is so important to highlight and celebrate more women who partake in traditionally male-dominated activities and sports, such as surf? And what further steps would you like to see be taken in Canada in order for these women to get the type of recognition that they deserve? For a, a long time and at a lot of competitions, sometimes the, the female port might be an maybe an, an afterthought or, or something like that, but um, there's been strides in the right direction and Queen of the Peak in Tofino does a really good job of that. And Leah grew up with 10 siblings. And so she, I think, was uh, conditioned to get her elbows out and make sure that she could ride away to wave as well. I think your film does pull out the heartstrings because we get to see this strong woman who has been through a lot in her life and she finds happiness and success doing what she loves the most. So what further messages do you want your film to convey to the audience? I think if you do anything with heart, you will eventually find out what your purpose was, I think um, something we couldn't dive into in three minutes was the specifics of what happened to her. You know, it was only three days later after her first sibling passed away that she competed and she ended up doing well. And, I, and she says that knowing, um, knowing that her, her sibling was rooting for her um, helped her. So I think that if you have um, a drive in life, sometimes the bad things that happen can really fuel you or move you forward. The settings that you and your crew, um, I guess, got to shoot at, uh, they looked stunning. And I've, I've never been out west. I've always wanted to go out west. And this made me want to go even more. <laughs> so what was filming the project like, the entire experience of it, getting to shoot those beautiful scenery? Images? Yeah, it, it, was, it was wild. So I grew up in Milton, just an oh. hour west of Toronto. And then I moved out west maybe 10 years ago. Um, and when I moved to the island, this, this uh, project was a great excuse to explore um, the west coast of the island, which is truly rugged. A lot of people are starting to know Tofino, but Sombrio Beach is maybe, um, I'll call it like the, the poor man's Tofino. It's not as developed, but it's just as raw and beautiful. It's also very remote. Like I could not find hotel rooms for my crew. And luckily they're the type of people who like this type of filming. And so they were down to sleep on the beach and in their cars. Our, our DOP had to sleep in his truck so that he could upload the media, clear the files and start the next day. I shared a, a photo on Instagram of me reheating the chili that my husband had made for our crew the night prior. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it um, was the most glamorous of shoots, but it, it was awesome. Leah was so lucky uh, to spend her first 13 years of her life there. You know, she says very clearly in the film that she was a squatter. They were always waiting for someone to come and knock on their door. And eventually that day came, but you can see why the community wanted to be there. It's, it's a magical place. So kind of what you just touched on, your film does a great job of depicting the connection between the people and the land around them. 
So you do that through the dialogue and the footage. And I want to know if that was consciously done. Um, and if so, uh, why is it nice to reflect on your personal and communal roots every now and again? I'm forever inspired by my surroundings, specifically on Vancouver Island. Um, if I'm having a bad day, if I go to the forest or the ocean, I feel infinitely better. I knew that when we cut back to some of the archival film that we wanted to do it as a projector onto the ocean wave. And so um, the underwater photographer, Jeremy Koreski, he, he was awesome. He went out into the water and, and got all these subsurface shots so that we had options in the edit room. We're wondering what came first, wanting to shoot a film about your surfer Leah or wanting to shoot a great surf film? I, I knew I had to come up with a surf story. And so I, I started very broadly researching um, some of the pioneers in cold water surfing on the west coast of Canada. Uh, but then when I, I met Lee, I, I knew that this was the, the type of story that I wanted to help share. We're curious, how did you fund your film? I had um, uh, some development funding from, from the broadcaster. And in, in Canada, we're lucky that we do get incentivized by our, our government to create new jobs. And so there was a little bit of funding there. But I will say that um, it absolutely was an economy of kindness. The, everyone went above and beyond um, what I felt even comfortable asking them to do because they wanted to deliver something that ultimately I couldn't even afford. So yeah, I think that's the thing with film is that people are, people are, are in it to make something special and there's not often enough money to go around. What is it about surfing? Can you explain what you think the mystique is and why do you think it captures people around the world? Everything has to come together, the wind, the, the surf, everything. Um, and I, I feel like that is true for documentary producing as well. Like you're kind of hoping for the stars to align and when it happens and, and you can feel the magic take place on, on camera, um, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just really cool. And so I imagine maybe that's why people continue to surf and why people want to capture it on film. This final question is from our programming team. We do ask it of every filmmaker that comes across our stage. What did you learn about yourself during the making of this film? That this is the type of, of programming that I like. I do like the nature stuff and um, I hadn't had a chance to do that before and so I hope to make more of that. We often, uh, as as female producers, sometimes are want to be nice, but sometimes you just have to be very clear about what you want. And then when you're sitting in the edit booth, be like that—that that was the right choice. 